We now continue with our analysis of the Edo election with Dr. Victor Hai, a seasoned political and public affairs analyst. He is an expert in local election matters and he joins us live in the studio. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let's begin with your assessment of INEX preparedness. Of course, we've seen cases, for instance, at the Iwohimi uh, local government, we saw uh, several voters complaining about the fact that the uh, electoral materials got to their polling units very late. And one would expect that for an election that they had several years to prepare for, we're still seeing this recurring issue of late arrival of election materials. Let's hear your thoughts. OK, thank you very much. Um, INEC has had 25 years of practice, if you like, or experience. And um, year on year, they, they build on the past experiences. Uh, in this case, there are, there are a few things that are peculiar to Edo State. The roads are very bad. Let's face facts. You can't bring the election materials to these places like a day before. They have to be, or you, I mean, you have to plan them properly so that they're not subject to abuse or whatever. So, and the good thing about it, which is why I'm, I may not complain too much, is that if it gets there two hours later, the time will be added. You understand what I'm saying? So it doesn't mean that people will be disenfranchised. The only thing is that if it stretches too much, a few people might just get tired and go home, you know. Uh, but um, where the terrain is bad, it's bad. And then I saw, I don't know if it was this station or another station where Oh, I, I read somewhere that one of the vehicles broke down on the way. So I would expect that at this stage, I know INEC does not have the, I cannot, it doesn't have its own vehicles. They work with the National Union for Road Transport e e workers and all that. So what I would propose is that the, I mean, if it's with the FRSC or VI or whatever, that any vehicle that will be on electoral duty must be roadworthy. You cannot afford to go with bad tires. You can't afford to go with a car that is not very good. Because when you do that, if there's a breakdown uh, on the way, it can disenfranchise people, and anything can happen to those materials. So it is very, very important that going forward, they get vehicles or approved vehicles that are roadworthy, you know, so that these vehicles will go travel without any hitches along the way. Good tires good engines and everything, you know, roadworthy. And I think it would help, you know. But um, by and large, these are isolated cases. I don't think it's that bad what has happened so far. It could happen even on the normal, you know, under normal circumstances. And I don't think that's um, anything to take away from my next preparations. All right. OK, let's <clears throat> turn our attention to the interviews we got from our reporters over there. And it seems that the PDP have a narrative and the APC have a different narrative towards this particular election. The PDP are more optimistic. I mean, the APC are more optimistic and they are more, they are more appreciative of the process while the PDP are already crying foul that things are actually going wrong left, right and center. Is this expected? I, I was listening to one of the candidates and I felt that that was, it was giving negative vibes, if you excuse my language. Mm -hmm. I didn't think, I, th I thought it was too early. I also listened to the governor on another station, I don't know if it was, if they also interviewed him here, where he said everything was free, was fair so far, you know, but the candidate in particular was, you know, a bit grumpy and complaining and all that. And I thought it was rather early, you know. Um, if materials come late, it can happen. The important thing is, is it there? Will anybody stop people who are already there from voting? If the answer is no, just move ahead and be positive about it. But when you know you begin to act this way, then it's like you know not. I, um, the other parties, I think so far, I, I don't hear any of them complaining. I don't mm. think it's a matter of the narrative. I just, I guess, it's just how individuals perceive. Sometimes you. You, you imagine enemies where they are known, or you imagine that things have been... I, I recall, who was it that um, uh, Shaibu also saw, I think, on another station? <laughs> yes, where there was a delay, and he felt there was sabotage. But when the materials eventually arrived, he said, oh, it's okay, mm -hmm. it can continue. Yeah. So many of them, it's natural for them to feel apprehensive 
when the materials don't arrive. But if their materials have arrived, just move on, vote. Mm. Is if they disenfranchise people, you know, or they say no, voting has closed at the particular time, mm. people are asked to go home, then you can begin to complain. All right, some specifics here, talking about the issue of apprehension you raised. Yes. Uh, yes. Already War Two, Unit 6, 7 and 8, or thereabout, we're hearing reports about uh, manipulation of votes with money voters, demanding money, uh, you know, EFCC stepping in, you know, people being chased out every now and then. But then again, you know, are there elections without minor skirmishes and are they enough to overturn the outcome of no, uh, such elections? Uh, certainly not. These yeah. things are to be expected. Mm. And permit me to say, I think the police have done a yeoman's job this time. Mm. The, their strategies are preemptive and preventive. And, you know, they came with this show of power. The first, one of the first things they did was say, vigilantes, drop your weapons. You are not operating during this election period. I know that political thugs and vigilantes can, they can, I mean, they, will, they have been bloodbath by now, mm. you know. Uh, it's still early days yet. It's when the results start coming in that we will know that there, is, there won't be any violence. Mm. Because when people begin to see that they're losing, you begin to see the reactions. Yeah. But what the police have done, I saw Frank Mba, mm. he did a good job, he's there, promising fire and brimstone on anybody who will come out. With. And then they also acted with intelligence. The people that were arrested, you know, with arms and all that, they said based on intelligence. They didn't wait for them to go out there and do anything. They went straight into their stronghold mm -hmm. and arrested them, and they showed us the arms. So that is a signal, a clear signal, that there'll be zero tolerance for, uh, what do you call it now, for violence of any sort. Mm -hmm. And uh, the state is actually prone to it. You have a lot of cultists, yeah. political thugs, and all of that. So what the security forces have done is, like I said, preemptive and uh, preventive, which is better than waiting for things to go. Um, in short, they have, it's like you know, anticipating and checkmating, not waiting for things to happen mm -hmm. and then becoming reactive. Mm -hmm. So for me, that is a big plus. You know, on their side, and it's the reason it has been peaceful so far. It's the reason people are confident to come out. Otherwise, you would have seen voter apathy. Mm. A lot of the um, polling centers are populated by voters, old people, young people, everybody is out there, yeah. you know, ready to vote. And it is because they feel safe. Mm. You know, the environment has been made to, I mean, conducive for people to go out and vote. So do you think that justifies the deployment of about 35,000 policemen to the state and also additional 8,000 officers from other uh, security operators? If it saves one life, I agree, yes. If that life is not close to you, you might say no. But if it saves a life, whatever it takes. You don't think it's the over-militarization of think, elections? No, I mean, they are not stopping anyone from voting. You understand? Mm. I don't want us to get too emotional about these things. If it takes 100,000 uh, policemen to save one life, it's worth it. Every life must count. You know, so if they do that and the signal is out there clear to political thugs, you know, that this is, not, this is now business or usual, then it's fine. You know, so as long as they don't interfere with the electoral process, as long as they don't stop people from voting or they're, and they're not taking any sides, I feel it's okay. And All right. If you're feeling right. it's okay, um, so now the big question will be, the fact that we've not had, because before the election there were yes. talks about drones of war. Yes, exactly. Being, being, being ramped up. Yes. And as we speak right now, this is about 3 yes. p.m. And we've not had any incident or any isolated incident whatsoever. So is this looking like a win-win? ultimately, in the grand scheme of things? Quite frankly, yes. Because, you see, the police play the mind game. It was psychological. It's like saying, guys, you come out, we are ready for you. Mm. From whatever. It doesn't matter which party. If you come out, we will, we will deal with you. And so, if that is what it takes, I think it's fine. Because before now, in many places, you will see people dying. You know, political... Edo is a peculiar state. Yes, it is prone to violence. You know, there are thugs, political thugs there. You know, so what, what if I listen to Frank and Bob very, and I think their strategy is very good. They came in there, and in one of the stations, I also saw on TV where they, you know, there was a truckload of, uh, you know, security persons who came, just did a show around, and then it's like saying, look, 
guys, hey, this is not, it's not, it's not, uh, you know, is exactly. So I, I think that that is really positive. Right. Yes. I would like your thoughts on the issue of misinformation, uh, false messages, uh, <laughs> you know, and of course, uh, people trying to counterbalance uh, or refute such messages. We saw that happening. It, uh, 24 you know, hours before the 24 election. 24 hours. I saw, and uh, I, I what, what, what's the that. significance of this at an off-season election? Not even talk about the, uh, you know, future general elections as it were. See, the, the good, the, the, what is peculiar about this election is that it's an election like no other, mm. particularly in Edo State. For the first time we have, it's a three-horse mm. uh, race, not the usual two-horse. And everybody is entrenched. That was a last-minute desperate attempt. Mm. Of course, it didn't succeed. You know why? Because people have already made up their minds. This mm. is one election where vote buy will not make sense. The peculiar thing about Edo people is yeah. that these are a group of people who, even in poverty, there is dignity. You cannot, the average Edo man is not a person you come and throw mm. money at and then think that he, he, he can collect your money, but he will still vote who he wants to vote for. People have made up their minds one way or another. And like I keep saying, this, what is peculiar about this election, what will decide this election, there are two things, and I keep saying it. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Mm -hmm. The friend of my enemy is my enemy. Go figure. Okay? You find a situation where people are voting across party lines. Yeah. It's not longer about your party, it's about who is my enemy. If you are friends with my enemy, you are my enemy. I will not vote for you. Mm -hmm. If you are the enemy of my enemy, I will embrace you. You are my friend. That's what's going on right now. There is ideology. That's with the elites. Many of them are bought into it, but how many of them are actually going out there to vote? Many are probably watching us right now, you know, and then pontificating about how the elections will go and the other. Yeah. But if you look at the rural areas, I saw the turnover in the capital, I saw in the rural areas, and I saw a lot of people in the rural, old people and all that coming out to vote. So this is one election where it might not be the best man that may win mm. because of the peculiar nature. People have made up their minds. People are settling scores with this election, which is unfortunate for Edo State at the end of the day. It may just end up being that, look, I'm doing it because I don't like your face. Even if it's a dog, there, I'll vote for him. You, you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So um, ideology will have its way, will, its place, uh, but I think at the end of the day, it's just going to be... You can't... This, what was done, which was your question originally, mm -hmm. yeah. is you know, all the fake news that went out and all that, mm -hmm. it's not going to change anything. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change anything. People, are, people have already dug in. Mm -hmm. They have made up their minds about who and where they're going to vote. Mm -hmm. So coming in at the last minute and saying, this person has defected, this person has stepped down, they are too smart for that. Not, certainly not in Edo State. Mm -hmm. They're too sophisticated for such Well, let's look at the role that this peace accord plays in this. Do you think that the peace accord played any role in the peace the seeming peace that we're seeing in the Edo elections, because we know that the APC keeps uh, making reference to the fact that the PDP didn't participate in the peace accord. Do you think that it played any role? So let's, uh, let's look at the word accord. Accord is agreement. Was there agreement? The answer is no. There was no accord. Some people agreed, but not everyone agreed. Therefore, there was no accord. What the accord does, and I've participated in it before, you know, is moral suasion. What it does is throw up a leader and then for the followers to see that, ah, our, our guy says we should not fight. We should maintain the peace. So they read the body language, they see that he has signed. By signing, he's sending a message to them that, look guys, let's, as we say in street language, let's maintain. You know what I mean? So it's moral suasion. It's not binding on anyone, you know, but the, it's good for the optics go out there, sign it. It also shows that you, are, you, you have a mind to ensure that there is peace and that the blood of anybody is not worth you know, the position for you. And when people back out of it, I frankly don't think it's a very good idea. It sends the wrong message. For whatever it's worth, just put that pen to paper and hold people accountable and say, look, I'm doing this, but guys, ensure that there's, a, there's peace. You know, I, and that's it. Or there's been fear, or there are, there, are, there are fears from the PDP that federal might might 
tilt this particular election. And they've also spoken about the, the uh, INEX wreck in that particular state. And the fact that his proclivities might be leaning towards one particular candidate over the other. Do you think that's going to be the case? Do you think federal okay. might and what, what the federal government wants and the ruling party wants will actually supersede what the voters do want on ground? The fact that it's out in the open yes. is already enough, quite frankly. The fact that people have, you see, what they're doing here is like, is just preempting whatever they think may happen. Um, this election, I'm going to be honest with you, nobody needs to rig anything. People have made up their minds already. There is no need to rig anything. People will vote one way or another, and the numbers will speak at the end of the day. It's not going to be about rigging. Nobody needs to rig. The results will be so obvious, one way or another. Uh, the issue of federal but, might... But if people don't trust the process... I mean, if people don't trust the political umpire here in INEC... No, you would have to wait for the process before you conclude. So let it be seen. You know, I can say I suspect you're a criminal. Mm -hmm. And so I begin to watch you all the way. But until you've committed a crime, you have not committed a crime. Is what I'm saying. Okay. So anybody can suspect anybody. Every black man is a suspect in the US or in a predominantly white environment. You know that. Yes. Yeah? So, but it's, that doesn't make you a criminal. All eyes will be on you, which is like what is happening right now, but we'll have to wait for the results. All right, Dr. Hai, if yeah. I may come in here regarding um, the issue of uh, social media and its impact on this election. So we're seeing some scenes so where, you know, uh, the issue of verifying claims of achievement by incumbent administrations, uh, you know, is being put out there uh, on the social uh, media, you know, in terms of provision of social infrastructure. Some people are debunking it and actually giving us visuals of, you know, those, uh, you know, places or roads, whether it has to be roads or uh, what have you, that, hey, look, you claim to have done this road, but uh, what I'm looking at here, you know, I've been staying here for years, it hasn't been done. On the issue of roads, especially when you said Edo State, uh, uh, you know, hasn't been able to overcome that, despite eight years of this administration and even successive administrations as well. So if they're coming out, the same people are still going to vote and debunking these claims that government has said, hey, I fixed this, or it's in the process of being fixed, but it's still the way it is. It's still moribund. So, okay. So, um, my job is to analyze here, not to give an opinion. <laughs> eh? However, um, you have asked a question. I'm going to answer in fairness, yeah, uh, and, and as objectively as I possibly can. Edo State is peculiar, in the sense that it's a how do I put it now? It's a state that is a gateway. You know, to, from the north to the south, from the east to the west, and all that. So many roads pass through there. Federal roads are there. Yep. And when roads are bad, um, some, some roads are for states, some are for federal. And some of the very, very bad roads, I have to be honest with you, are the federal roads. Mm. The Auchi, uh, Epoma, Bini, Auchi, Bini Epoma Auchi Road mm -hmm. is in terrible shape. It has collapsed. The governor may take the flick, but it's not his road. And he can't fix it. They wouldn't let him fix it. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, the ones in the city are for the governor. That one is a state. These are state roads. So the blames can go hmm. either way, you know? So, and at times like this, of course, people will bring out whatever it is that they, yeah. use, they can use to campaign. Hmm. You have done this, and then you bring out that. I can bring a, I can bring a federal road, mm -hmm. you know, to show people who don't know any better mm. and say, look, he has not fixed the roads, mm. and yet it might not be his fault. Sure. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So, and the other person may come and say, federal government has refused to fix your... Yeah. So it's like that. So mm. um, I'm not going to look at it and then put the blame squarely on one person's mm. shoulders. Um, for the, the ones inside in the city, in Benin City and, you know, in the hinterlands of the state, mm -hmm. I'll hold the governor responsible for. You know, of course, there are places where and I know a few mm. that erosion have, I mean, some roads totally collapsed. 
You know, or that's, erosion that, a little more that than within the city limits. That's, uh, that's no, no, no. In, in some of the local government local areas government, and okay. all that, those ones are under the state. All right, those ones have happened. Mm. But the federal highways and all that, you can't hold the governor responsible for those. Right. So, but this is political time. So people will throw up anything <laughs> and, and use it. You know, Indeed. so that's it. Let me take you back a mm. little to the campaigns that were held, you know, towards this election. Would you say they were issue-based? Because I know that we've been talking about Nigeria, uh, Nigerian politicians moving towards issue-based campaigns instead of, you know, exchanging vitriol and, you know, casting aspersions at one another's comments and uh, campaigns. Are we moving towards you that You want direction? the truth? The campaigns were truly issue-based. But will that have an impact? No. Why do I say so? There were issues, genuine issues that were thrown up. But I said what will determine this election is the enemy of my enemy is my friend and the friend of my enemy is my enemy. So your issues and your ideologies don't matter. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. There are too many entrenched enemies and uh, um, things that are, there are too many things that are blinding people. Mm to the issues, to the ideologies, to the good programs that people have. You're talking about the voters now. Yes. So the campaigns were truly issue-based. They were. But is that what we're determining? Unfortunately, no. There are some things that are deeper than issues. Some scores, you know, that people are settling one way or the other. You know, so that, that is louder than the issues. People who have grounds against each other are deaf to the true issues. They are deaf to reasoning. Unfortunately, they have scores to settle. You know some of them. You know, so these are the things. Unfortunately, these are the bigger issues in Edo politics today. It's not about issues. The elites all listen to the issues. And they are, they, for those who will vote, they will vote based on the issues and on ideology and all the fine programs that have been laid out. Mm. You understand? If they go out to vote. Mm. In the cities, class. they will. But in the rural areas, I don't know how many of them are listening to these issues. How many of them are interested in those? What you will see are influencers, you know, mm. carrying their troops along. Okay? So, like I was saying earlier, uh, somewhere but is that actually. A good thing? It's not necessarily a good thing. Obviously not. Mm. But that's the reality on the ground. And in politics, anything goes. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, I, I was giving an example earlier. Uh, politics is the only place where uh, one plus one does not add up to two. One plus one can equal to mm -hmm. 100,000. And I'll give you an example. 2015 election. Before 2015, every time uh, Buhari was coming, I was getting 10, between 9 and 11 million votes. True? Yeah. Consistently, but he never gave him, he never won mm -hmm. until 2015 when Tidubu came with his 3.5 guaranteed from the Southwest and added it to his own. And then you, so you see the power of leverage there. And then you see synergy there mm -hmm. one plus one equal to 15 million or more. So that's the thing in politics you leverage eh, on influencers. Okay? Now, and that is going to play out here. You will find people who have troops behind them. They are going to gather these people and say, this is the way to go. Mm -hmm. There are interests. And those interests for them are stronger than all the, I will do this, I will do that for you. They are not, they are deaf to it. Mm -hmm. They are listening to their influencers. And this is where, like I said, the political magic will come in. You know, where the, 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 the numbers will add, those individuals who are influencers yeah. will now determine where the votes will go to. All right. All right, um, before we actually move it on, I want to find out from you. Do you think the peculiar situation and the peculiar position the PDP find themselves will hurt Asue or might not help him as such? I was avoiding mentioning parties, but if you insist and you want me to talk about it, I will. Yes, please do. Um, quite frankly, I feel very sorry for him. He has worked very hard, very, very hard. 
But it's up against a lot of forces. What are these forces? First, the legacy part of PDP, which is supposed to be his party, they are working against him. And that's, they are the ones that have all the local government chairmen and ward chairmen eh, and officials of the party yeah. belong to that. When Obaseki came in, wanted to change it, went to court, but it didn't succeed. They have to serve out their term. So the party machinery is in the hands of the legacy group. They are working. That's why I said the enemy of my enemy. <laughs> right, they are working. Wait, just a minute. Let me finish. I've asked yeah. a question. They are working, you know, against him. Not because of him. Not because he's not good enough. But because he's a friend to their enemy. So they are working against him. The Shaibu factor. Shaibu, ha Shaibu has his own troop behind him. He will, he's, he's not hiding it. He's putting them behind. Well, I wish I say the APC guy has oil running on his head. He's not, he doesn't need a debate. He doesn't need to do any campaign. The camp of the opposition is working without any effort for him. That kind of grace is, I don't know where, you know, there's a special oil running on his head. All right. The guy is not making any effort. We'd we'll just like to uh, put a pause to it, but yes. of course we'll come back to okay. you uh, with your brilliant perspectives. Glad to know you're still with us on this special coverage of the Edu elections. And still with us in the studio is Mr. Victor Ohai talking to us about all of the happenings at the elections. Thank you so much for staying with us. Thank you for having me. Now let's switch a little to the gender imbalance in these elections. We were discussing earlier and we were talking about the fact that it is just only one female candidate in the elections. Uh, that's the uh, peace patience key in Didi, representing the People's Redemption Party. And one would wonder how, where, how far we've come. Are we really progressing in this move towards gender balance when it comes to political participation, when it comes to giving women a seat at the table? Most women participating in these elections are serving as running mates, deputies, to the uh, candidates themselves. What are your thoughts on this? Power will never be served a la carte. Take note, one, the first female senator in Nigeria is from Edo, was from Edo State, Franca Febwa. Okay? On her merit, she <laughs> went out there, defeated men, and won election from the same place where Oshomo is from right now. Okay? Um, uh, Itagiwa, we have seen. At the point in time, we had one if not because she just missed a few things went wrong, uh, Patricia, what's her name again? She became the speaker of the House of Reps. Look, the way the world is right now, it's no longer the time of brawn, it's not a time of brains. You know, if we're sitting now and talking about affirmative action in the area of, say, give women power, it's not going to happen. Women are very smart. Look, at, they've taken over the banks now. They're the ones heading the banks mm -hmm. on their merit. The same thing with political power. We cannot now say, okay, give, I, I love when people say, allocate certain seats. It's not going to be by election again. You can't do that. I am for women, I, I support them, I know they are brilliant. They are, I mean, so brain for brain, it, there's a level playing field right now. So you think they don't merit it yet? Now you're getting me wrong. I, I'm, I'm saying brain for brain. I'm not, I'm not saying they don't merit it. Now you're putting the wrong the words in my mouth. No, I'm just trying true. to understand. No, in my very you're presence, you're telling me now I'm saying they don't merit. When I say that there's a level playing, playing ground now, and that brain for brain, they are matching the men and doing better. I just told you about the banks. Yeah, we're talking politically. Example. So politically, power will not be served a la carte. Go there, don't sit down and feel that it is for the men. Go out there. Compete and win. I gave you examples of strong women. I talked about Patricia Ete. I talked about Franca Febua. I talked about uh, Florence Itagiwa. I can also tell you about the uh, the governor, first female governor, um, the one in uh, uh, the one that was uh, obese deputy. Anambra. Uh, no, 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 no. Yes, Anambra, exactly. So, I mean, you want to talk about even the Yoruba woman who became a senator in. Uh, in the north, what's her name again? Um, in Adamawa State, or which state is it? I'm trying to remember her name. But you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, when you look at that, 
She's a Yoruba woman. Went there. Are, you, are we talking about King Ibe again? Who won in the federal capital? If she was looking at herself as a woman, would, would that have happened? So it's not going to be served a la carte. Go out there. That's my encouragement to women. The women go there in classes, they beat the men. They make first class on their merit. So you don't sit down and think it's for the men or wait for them to come and say, women, this is your, uh, your quota. Come on. No, you don't do that. Dr. Hai, if I may come in here. Yes, okay. please. Uh, patience uh, for a... She's defined the odds to put up a good fight, no doubt. But um, I'm a little bit concerned about her party. That's the People's Redemption Party. You know, if you look at um, in terms of penetration within Edo State, um, yes, you might say the odds are stacked against her. But politically, where is this party in Edo State? And um, if she was going to do this again, if she has to do this again, uh, would it be advisable she still goes through this same, you know, uh, channel? Uh, to project her uh, ambition. Okay, so um, it's not my job to tell anybody which party to go to. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you should be where you're, the, you should associate with people you are ideologically, you know, mm -hmm. um, in tune, yeah. so to say. <clears throat> there must be a reason why she's there. To say one party is better than another mm. is not my job and it's wrong. Mm. Okay, but the good thing is this, that is her party. She went out there, she won the nomination. Mm. Give it to her. If she changes party tomorrow, she's already a force because people know that, okay, look, she has been there and done yeah. that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you recall that within, uh, was it PDP or so, mm -hmm. there was this, uh, what's her name, was it, is it Benedi or one of these ladies, strong women, like, just at the last week, she stepped down and said, I'm stepping down. I, I was disappointed, mm. you know. She could have gone the whole hog, you know, not step down. Just go the whole hog, give it a shot and see what can come out of it, mm -hmm. you know. So I think our women, are, they have proven themselves over the years and they're doing so even more, they're doing even more so now. So I think that they should go out there, compete with the men because it's not longer about, it's not about bronze anymore, it's about brain, mm. you know, it's about strategy. It's about how charismatic you are, how many people you can win over. Mm -hmm. And you know, if it's gift of gab, women have it more than men. Mm -hmm. They are more charming, they are more, you know what I mean. So, <laughs> but, but, but is, it, is it about getting there, but actually making an impact? You know, the same Patricia Ate, if I remember then, uh, was embroiled in a scandal. Mm -hmm. And to a large extent, you know, that more or less dampened her. No, 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 but, yeah. but, but so was, uh, what's his name? The mm -hmm. other speaker who, who went to forge a certificate, mm. what's his name? Uh, from Toronto, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yes. So you can't say because she's a woman, mm. therefore. I think it's wrong to just, you know, use that broad, that broad stroke mm. and brush, and uh, that brush and just say, okay. There are, for every one woman with a scandal, there are 20 other men <laughs> with a scandal. So we cannot now say because she's a woman, therefore, mm. I don't agree. Okay. Completely, I disagree. All right, uh, Dr. Ahai. Yes. Um, since we were speaking about this particular subject, yes. uh, you've actually established that some of the parties are special purpose, purpose vehicles. vehicles. Yes. And we look at the PDP, we look at the APC, um, with nothing against the Labour Party. But it always still seems that if you want to get ahead in politics, even though the PDP right now are in shambles, literally, some will still say that if you want to get ahead and you want to get probably the best chance, you have to be in the ranks of the PDP or the APC to be able to matter on election day and also probably get a better chance. Going back to the point of what Nia just said about the party she finds itself. Okay. Can we have people come out from unknown parties and weave a lot of influence, or because there are usually talks well, about structures and the rest of them. Fact check, fact check. Abia State, who is in charge there? Which party won? Alex Oti, yes. Traditionally, what, are, what is that state's party? The PDP state. Great. Um, the federal capital. That might be the outline. Wait. The Federal Capital Territory yes. eh, is like a mini-state on its own. Which party won? In the Senate. 
Yes, it's the only senator. That's no, the only because there's no governor in no, the this, state. No, yes, the senator is the governor of the uh, whatever he wants. I, 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 okay, wait. Yes, we can. We'll that is the highest, that. the highest elective post in that. Yes. Is that not true? Yes. Which party won? Labour. Good. And a woman. Yes. Eh? The late senator who later changed to APC, the one that died in London, in a London hotel, um, which party did he win with? Yeah, I think... Uh, I think YPP. He, YPP, yes. Eh? To if APC. I Uber. Well, he had to move Where, to the APC. No, 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 no. Where did he win? Which one gave him this? YPP. Yes. Now, in Lagos State, if the presidential election were a governorship election, which party won in the last election? Labor. Labor. This same Edo State, eh? which party won at the uh, presidential election? If it was a governorship election, which party was? Was it not Labour? So you see, we just make sweeping generalizations. Let's speak to facts. Let's, let's, so you can. We have moved from just parties now. Nigerians are more sophisticated now. They are looking beyond parties and they are scanning now, looking at individuals and deciding who is there in but their Dr. best interest. Ohai, when, you, when you put all this into context, yes. it's a fact. All these do, do not account for up to 10%. Of the general results that actually came out, whether it's presidential, but what you what you said, what you said was House of you Assembly. spoke in absolute terms. Yes, if you want to system. make, if you want to make, and if you want to win anything, you must be in those two parties. I just did but, a fact check but, now no, but and proved you wrong. It's still, it's still in the minority. Yes, this is the outline. minority. These are outliers because when you check out the results from the governor uh, from the presidential to the governorship, then to the senate. You still find out that it's still predominantly the like PDP, that's PDP what you should win have said. or an APC That's win. what you should have said. You may say it's still you the may same stand thing. a better chance. That's what you should have said. Okay. You may stand a better chance. And why is that so? These two parties are older. They have more, they have more structures. They can defend their votes more. Okay? But it doesn't mean there cannot be a disruption. We have seen disruptions right now. We have seen disruptions minor in the system. Minor skirmishes, some people say. Minor ripples, not the major ripple that we are talking about. And what happened in Lagos was major. But how did, it, lost, how did it have no, fact lost. the ground scheme no, of things? No, it was unheard of. In his stronghold, in his backyard, yes. Tinubu was defeated but in the presidential didn't election. Lose, but no, didn't lose the election. if that was the only election, he had lost. But Dr. Hai, that cannot no, be no, the only election. No, no, I'm just election. letting you know, there are disruptions. Yes. So don't think that it is only... It, it can only be... Look at Etios are here. What happened? Eh? The guy from Labour, who was not even serious. Right? There was a disruption. We had... Um, what's his name now? The PDP guy, the musician. Um, um, Banco Lewa Lete. Uh -huh. And uh, Obani Koro. Yes. And then one Labour guy who, who just threw his... He didn't even need to make any effort. He disrupted the system. The thing is, eh, what is happening is with the voters. It's not with the, it's not with the parties anymore. There's a mind shift right now in the minds of the voters. That's what's happening. People are no longer, whatever you feed them with, they just take. That's not the case anymore. What do you think is responsible for this mind shift? I think people are becoming more enlightened. People are becoming more aware. Uh, they are not following like a dog on a leash anymore. So anywhere, anywhere you say we should go, we should just go. It's no longer happening. People are more discerning now. So it's like, okay, so you want us to vote for this party, but who are you putting there? Mm. If you saw there, uh, Itwa is obedient. He clearly voted, he was, he was going with, uh, he was one of the signatories mm. for the campaign, this is for Peter Obi. But when a brother come contest, what did happen? <laughs> you saw him with his uh, brother in Edo here. Mm. He stood by his brother. It's about interest. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's no longer just about parties. It's about interest. Where does your interest lie? Mm. So uh, it's yeah. not, sir, not be so again. No. Indeed. That, that, this has been an enlightening discussion. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we can uh, tap on all of this uh, as we go. Uh, Dr. Victor Hai, uh, political and public affairs analyst, it's always a pleasure to have you on uh, moments like this and beyond as well. <laughs> yes. Good to have I'm you. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for joining us.